Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Um, I want to dedicate this video to the previous video as sort of an addendum and to uh, sort of clear up any vagary that, I've, that I might have uh, glossed over or I wasn't too uh, detailed about, um, along with some extra data that's been brought to my attention since the video. So let's just get right into it. Um, I don't want to uh, spend too much time getting bogged down. So on the right is this map that I showed in my last video of these proposed migrations, which have been exonerated by, by, by the most recent data that's come out. We all know now that there was a migration from the Bering Strait into the Americas, and this was 17,000 years ago. But a thousand years after that, about 16,000 years ago, they started branching off into two groups. So one group went down all that ended up they ended up stopping in Belize basically before continuing on in the South America that's the first that's the first migration um, the second migration went from Belize into South America and then the third happened later which was around Cal like the, the California uh, the Clovis culture I mean, all these are, are part of the Clovis culture. They're all related genetically. But about way later, about 4,200 years ago, they went and settled the Central Andes, these pe the, the, the people with the Clovis marker. Now, these people split off into two lineages. Okay, I guess I wasn't very clear about that in my last video. There are two lineages. And they both, both lineages trace to the ancient Beringians. That's what I want to make clear. So one lineage, again, they basically settled North and South America. I mean, North America, including Canada, all the way down to Belize, right at the Isthmus of Panama. That is the first lineage. The second lineage came in three separate waves down into South America. So you guys see this wave here, and then this one, and then the last one here uh, the grayish color so the blue green and then gray okay you guys still with me i'm still with me good okay because even i was confusing myself uh as i was talking about it in the last video so the first wave 15,000 11 11,000 years ago the second wave around 9,000 years ago and this second wave is very very there's a lot of controversy and a lot of confusion it's like a tangled web this second the second wave which i'll get back to you in a second and nine thousand years is a very pivotal um, number when we're talking about the peopling of of south america especially the third wave you don't have to worry too much about although um they did it was four thousand two hundred years ago and these people mainly came from the channel islands so there there are these people in Ch there's this place called the channel islands off the coast of california and they, their genetic mar marker was the same ones found in the people in the Central Andes. And they came there 4,200 years ago, and that, that's, that's clear in the data. The study that I talked about last time, the, the University of Sao Paulo, Harvard, Harvard University, and the Max Planck Institute in Germany, those three, the, the, those three main, among others, but th those are the three main uh, research facilities that that sent uh, that that can commission this study, and they establish these dates essentially. So the first wave of migration, again, I said they're the Clovis culture. They have the Clovis marker. They all, all the subsequent uh, migrations, contain the, their DNA, their genetic marker, according to this study. Now we're going to get into later where there's an anomaly, which is the crux of of the debate here is whether or not every single Amerindian or Paleo Indian discovered in South America has this, has this uh, trait, has this a uh, genetic marker. Another thing about this study I want to clear up is a Montana boy. Now the Montana boy here is dated 12,600 years ago. So the DNA of that boy found was found basically in this place called Lagoa Santa, 
which is where Lucia, the Lucia school is. If you guys don't know who Lucia is, she's apparently she's like the Lucy, the oldest. She's the Lucy of South America, basically. She's the oldest uh, living, ho or not living, the oldest discovered Homo sapiens in South America, and she dates to about eleven thousand something years, I think. But anyway, they her people were found to have this genetic marker in uh, in the Montana boy. Now, why is that important? Well, the guy who who in in the eighties, this guy named uh, Walter Neves, he was one of the first guys who who they who was delving into this line of inquiry. So he found this skull. The Lucia skull is known for being very well intact. So he reconstructed the facial features with skin and everything, and found that she had Australasian and African uh, phenotypes. So, using this, he he proposed that they at some point in the remote past there must have been some Asian uh, some migration that predated this Beringia migration. Well, at the time he didn't say that. Now, in reflection, it, it seems to be that seems to be the implication. But he attributed before the Beringia hypothesis, he he thought that the people from Beringia had African traits. Th what I want to clear up now is these migrations, they have nothing to do with people from Africa or Austronesia. The, I'm talking about these migrations, okay? These migrations. I'm not saying that these migrations were the only migrations, and some scientists are saying that, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that these migrations that in question, conducted by Harvard, the University of Sao Paulo, and the Max Planck Institute, they're all, everything that they found, they don't have any genetic markers tracing to Africa. In these, in what's depicted here. I want to stress that enough. Okay. So he constructed this Lucia school, and for a long time, he thought Lucia had these African markers. But then when the study was conducted, they found that the people... And Luzia herself, they had they they had Clovis in them essentially, because they're related to the Montana boy. So that kind of destroyed the hypothesis that Luzia was exclusively from, or had some sort of genetic connection toward the Austronesian, Australasian uh, African people. We'll get back to that in a second, though. I'm not I'm not saying that there was no. African or, or, or there was no separate migration other than this one. I, I'm, I know I said that three times already, but I want to stress that. I'm, I will get to that later. So from, from a genetic standpoint, the Lagoa Santa people, which is basically where they found Luzia, they're descendants of the first Amerindians, the Paleo-Indians, these people from Beringia. Okay. Okay, so here's where we get into the really interesting stuff. The members of this first lineage of South Americans, the first lineage meaning those resulting from this migration, they left no identifiable descendants among today's Amerindians. So their genetics did not pass on to the modern people today that are living in South America today. At ni the 9,000 years, remember I said 9,000 is going to be important, 9,000 years ago their DNA di disappears completely. So there was some, so from 9,000 years onward there was this so-called population replacement, genetic replacement, where all the fossil samples is replaced by DNA from the first Clovis wave. So all the, the current living Paleo-Indians, Amerindians are descendants of this wave now. Whereas 9,000 years ago and prior, there was some other group of people living there. That's what I want to clear up. And I, I guess I didn't make that clear enough in, in the first video which is my fault. From the University of Sao Paulo specifically, they, they studied, these are the samples that they studied, okay? And keep in mind these dates. 10,100 and 9,100 years ago from Lagoa Santa, 49 individuals. And then, and then the, the, of the 49 individuals at the 15 archeological sites in Argentina, there were 11 individuals between 8,900 to 6,600 years ago. 9,400 and 7,300 years ago in Belize, Brazil, 10,100 and 1,000 years ago, 
and then Chile, 11,100 and 540 years ago. So all of these are younger, except that one in Chile, 11,100 11, years or younger, essentially. Okay, that's very important. Okay, so now we're going to get into the second part where there may have been some sort of Australasian migration in the remote past. So not all the human remains found at some of the most ancient archaeological sites in Central and South America belong to genetic descendants of the Clovis culture. So the inhabitants of several sites did not have any Clovis-associated DNA. So these, the ones that did not have Clovis-associated DNA were way older than the ones that I mentioned, than the ones that they studied earlier. The, so I think one was 12,500 years ago. Um, that was Luzia, by the way. Luzia was, I'm sorry, Luzia was 12,500 years ago. So that Luzia was the oldest, but she, apparently she had, she did have uh, Clovis DNA in her. But Luzia was probably some sort of mix because she wasn't entirely Clovis, although she did have Amerindian in her. She and her people had some DNA that was unknown, essentially. So when the cell article, the the the, univer the the previous the previous study that I was just talking about with Harvard and and uh, University of Sao Paulo, etc., another article comes out. So Andre Strauss was one of the authors of this. So he studied 15 ancient skeletons, and which dated between 10,400 and 9,800 years ago. And then the 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 Spirit Cave guy, the 10,700 year old one from Nevada. So with those, he found out that the, hu the first human groups out of Alaska over here did not come about merely through gradual occupation. The molecular data suggests that the first humans to invade Alaska or neighboring Yukon split into two groups. This happened 17,500 to 14,600 years ago. One group, yeah, I already talked about this. Three of the Lagoa Santa five that they studied found to have some genetic material from Australasia. So... So Neves was from the 80s and early 90s. He he was kind of onto something. He was right. So this is where the all the 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 conflict comes. This is the crux of the. This is basically the intellectual battlefield right now. And nothing can really move forward until people uh, these researchers find more samples from specific regions they just need a higher sample size from every region and they need older stuff older than eleven thousand years ago at the very least um would go a long way toward toward uh building this picture because right now this everything that i've told you is a good theory it's a good hypothesis and everything they found supports this but the stuff that they found there's not that much there's still not a lot to go by. So to be really safe, they need to find more stuff, a bigger sample size to really get to the truth here. And this is why it's so confusing. Uh, the researchers are not able to explain the origin of the Australasian DNA or how it ended up in only a few of the Lagoa Santa people. So the fact that the genome si signature of Australasia has been present for 10,400 years in Brazil but is absent in all the genomes tested to date, which are as old or even older, and found for, farther north, like I said, in Channel Islands, is a challenge considering its presence in Lago, Lagoa Santa, which is, if you guys don't know where it is, it's like, it, it's next to Belo Horizonte in Brazil. It's like right in the center where all the jungle is. That's where it is. And then I want to direct you to this other article. So prior to all of this data that I've just... Uh, we've talked about all, all of these rec this, these this, these recent discoveries. All the the only data they had were from stuff that was less than a thousand years old. So you can see this is a huge update to what was previously known. So there are a couple key discoveries from these uh, new studies. So first, I mentioned that a Clovis culture associated individual from North America around 12,800 years ago, shares distinctive ancestry with the oldest uh, South American individuals that were studied. That's the first discovery that is in, in, that's very, 
very important. The second key discovery was the fact that the Clovis culture associated lineage is missing in present day South Americans and in ancient samples that are less than 9,000 years old. So 9,000 years ago, something happened, either some sort of giant Holocaust type situation where they, they killed off everybody of who were who were different than than the the Clovis derived people or a sickness maybe there was some sort of plague that that somehow the paleo indians were immune to but then the other, the more the older australasian african uh, derived people might have gotten killed off we don't know but there was a continent wide population replacement that began 9000 years ago so something happened there something happened 7000 bc around there something happened so after the population replacement there was striking genetic continuity between ancient individuals dating up to 9000 years ago and modern people from multiple south american regions this contrast with western eurasia and africa where there are a few places with such long standing continuity in the last episode i was talking about how the, this situation is a very unique situation c compared to uh, other parts of the world because this this is not the case this this case of this long-standing continuity of the genetic continuity so i hope that kind of uh, clears things up for you guys um i i had a i got a couple of emails and then some people uh told me in person that they they wanted some clarification so i felt like i needed to clear that up a little bit so just to recap the studies that came out are talking about just these migrations from the ancient Beringians. And then they don't they make no mention of the the Australasians or the the or the people for, the individual of Australia who and and people from Africa who have markers coming into South America. They do not talk about those waves. But David Reich, he does mention that more he does acknowledge that their DNA was found in some people in in the in Brazil. And also the 9,000 year cutoff, 9,000 years on, 9,000 years ago and onward, and early or and later, 9,000 years and later, something happened where those people, their DNA basically either gets diluted, or th th there's a genetic cul-de-sac, like I mentioned in the last video, or they get killed off in some crazy genocide or some sickness or something like that 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 only targeted them. So let me know in the comments what you guys think, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.